Hey guys, Steph here. So in this vlog, I'm going to talk about becoming a freelance web designer. So it's actually from a, an article I wrote about a year ago on how to build websites. And uh, I'm going to go over a few things here very quickly for people who are just learning this stuff. First of all, let me point out that I'm putting together a guide, a module for my Python course, and then I'm going to do a similar thing for my interactive web developer course, specifically on career paths for Python and then career paths for web developers. And the three basic career paths, by the way, are getting a job, number one, number two, becoming a freelancer, contractor, and number three, building your own app or your own programs in Python. So there are pros and cons to each, there are lifestyle considerations for each. And uh, so again, I just, I just have to edit the last couple of videos for the Python version of this. And essentially, I go over the pros and cons of each, and then I give you an action plan for each of these career paths so you can get up and running as quickly as possible. That's something that uh, people who have done my course will tell you. They, they see that it's very real-world oriented. I'm there to teach you real-world coding. So I figure it made sense, since so many people have been asking me over the years, to actually put together a module for my courses that show you how to take these courses and to turn them into money to become to commercialize your skill sets, whether, whether it be working for somebody or becoming a freelancer or maybe building your own apps. Let's get back to this main vlog point, becoming a freelance web designer. So the first question I answer is how do you get your first clients? So you have to have your basic skill sets and then what you got to do is you got to get yourself a blog site up there. You got to get a website up there demonstrating your skills. And there's a couple of ways you can use some sites that where you can go bid on contracts. It might be a good way to establish uh, some experience because being a professional web designer, a web developer, prof professional programmer in general, regardless of the language, requires that you understand how to deal with clients. Whether clients happen to be working in the same company as you and you're doing, you're, you're the web developer and you're producing the code for the company, or whether you're working uh, as a contractor and working with clients in that regard. That's a big part of uh, being a professional coder is working with, working with the clients. So how do you get your first clients? You have to establish your credibility. You have to establish that you know what you're doing, putting up a website, putting up a blog, having a GitHub account with some code, and having done a couple of projects. That's why that you can demonstrate. That's why in my interactive web developer course, we teach the core, which is key to getting up and running quick. And then we have all these projects that you can choose from. Now, there's 66 hours of video, which is quite a bit, but it's not expected, it's not required that you do all the projects. In fact, if you just, you do the core, which is the core language training, then you do the projects, you do one, maybe two projects, then you're gonna be ready to go professionally, and you're gonna have something to show in your, uh, your GitHub, and you're gonna have something to show online. You can show prospective clients, hey, look, this is what I've done. So that's the first thing. If you're a freelancer, hold on, is this, yeah. Yeah, this is all about being a freelancer, not getting a job so much. If you're a freelancer, word of mouth is probably a great way to go. Talk to some friends, family, say, hey, I'll do a job for free. You gotta learn first one or two projects do for free and it goes from there. Now in that modules where I actually taught, teach this, comes with a, 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 an ebook, no, it's not even a book, it's a small guide including videos. I get into more detail. So uh, one of the things you gotta learn to do is managing your projects, managing your clients. And that's a big part of uh, creating a good working relationship with your clients, being able to set expectations, to meet deadlines, and to uh, just be professional. And by doing this, it will go a long way in terms of keeping the process smooth so that you uh, don't get into any, into any disputes with your clients. Again, I cover more of that in other courses. Uh, what to charge and how to bill your clients. Ah, that's, a, that's an interesting subject. Now, I won't go into detail here because this is a, a vlog, but in a nutshell, when you're first starting out, the first one or two small gigs are going to be freebies probably, unless you're lucky. And the reason is because you're still learning, you're still cutting your teeth, as they say. And so um, 
once you've doing, done those first couple of projects for free, I, what I teach is that you should keep meticulous records of how long everything takes. And then from there, you can uh, then start judging how to actually bid on a contract and actually how to manage your, the cost of a job so it makes sense for both you and the client. And again, I'm just going over things quickly uh, in the actual course, there's a lot more detail. And, um, and as you become more and more advanced, you're gonna be much more efficient in how you code and you... Woohoo, my camera shut off for some reason. Don't know why. So at the end of the day, in a nutshell rather, the rate that you charge for a job and what you're gonna be able to make per hour is gonna increase in time as you develop more and more skills. So keep that in mind. What's the difference between per diem and a cost per project? So you as a developer will wanna charge per hour, right? Because it's hard to judge the cost of things, especially at first. That's where meticulous notes on how long it takes you to do things is gonna help you a lot in the medium and long term because you can understand how long things take. But your clients are gonna to wanna to pay per project. They will ask you how much you charge per hour, but they're all gonna to wanna to pay per project because they don't wanna have uh, runaway costs, especially when they're just getting to know you. They don't know who you are. Finally, I'll end off this vlog and say, go check out my video on FU Money. Very important. FU Money will help you in your freelance career in ways you, had, you would never expect and so it's very important that you develop a nice big stash of FU money. And that's pretty much it for now. I'm just curious to see if this camera is going to shut off again. I don't know. All right. Much more to come. Much more to come. Bye-bye.